Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookandwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. And I wanted to show y'all some papers that I had dyed and I did it a new way, for me anyway, a new way. I wanted to show you the uh, a couple of new things that we have in the shop. And then we're going to redraw for these two giveaways because the people that won them... I announced it twice in two different videos and never got a reply from them. So, somebody else is going to win those two things and I'll show them again in just a minute. First off, we have Crackle Paste in Opaque from uh, Tim Holtz from Ranger Inks. We have that in the shop. And if you have never used Crackle Paste, um, it gives you like the prettiest effect on things and I was trying right before I turned on the video to find something with a little bit of color in it and here is a purple something something so let me get my pointy edge and get that packaging off that's a uh, thorn in my side it's the packaging I know that it's needed but takes me forever to get it off usually okay so it looks like white gesso okay um normally i would put this on with my fingers but since we are going to um, go on to something else i'm going to take out of the cap first too i'm going to put it on with a little spatula just a little bitty bit just to show you in a minute once it dries how that looks but yeah if you've never used crackle paste it's so fun and you kind of get it kind of get it thick the thicker you get it the more little crackles you'll you'll um you'll find i wanted to say see and i wanted to say find <laughs> and it all mixed together Okay, so I've got it just a little bit thick. Okay, you can see a little bit of the rippling in it. And we're going to set that aside and let it dry. And we'll come back to it. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to leave it right over here. And wipe off my spatula. We have these in the shop if you don't have them. There's a um, straight flat one and then this this slanted one in the package and I love it for all kinds of mediums oh here's the other one okay so that's crackle paste and uh, you will see if you've never witnessed crackle paste you'll see the results of that in just a second uh, the new Tim Holtz Christmas stuff it's so pretty. Uh, this is the uh, wallpaper scraps, worn wallpaper scraps. So it's got all of these wallpaper um, vintage style papers in it. And they are, let's see, there's 20 of those, five by eight sheets. Then there's 19 cutout scraps. So uh, poinsettias and stuff like that. They look like that, and they got little strips in them too. So pretty. Goes with all your vintagey Christmas stuff. The uh, collage tiles. Now we have the regular uh, Tim Holtz collage tiles, and then we have the Christmas collage tiles. And yeah, there are a few little black and white vintagey people on there, but then a lot of it is Christmas themed stuff. Let me show you a couple of those. So see, December, and it's got a um, vintage year on it. It's got some um, plaid, Christmas plaid on there. It's got some ledger. Look at that Santa. Very cute. December 24th, December 25th. So all kinds of nice little P 
pieces in the collage tiles that you can add to journal pages or scrapbook pages or cards or whatever. Super cute. Also with that crackle paste, you can um, set it with a heat tool. Um, I'll do a little piece with the heat tool on the edge for you. I just want y'all to get the effect. All right, I'm gonna let the rest of it dry, air dry, but you can already see where I have um, put the heat to it right there, where it's doing a little bit of crackling. So pretty. This is the Christmas Botanical Layers. It sold out the quickest, and um, we have ordered more. They should be um, to the shop. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we should have. We should already have it maybe in the shop, but um, as far as when I'm making this <laughs> video. Uh, that's what I have to do see because I schedule my videos out so I have to think about um, <laughs> when they when they are um, being <laughs> posted so I'll know to tell y'all the right time so all kinds of little poinsettias look at the trees in this one. Oh, there's another one I didn't even get out another piece of holly and there's more holly and we got some wreaths in there And some pine. And then look at these cards. How cute. Oh, there's another poinsettia. Very, very cute pack. So, I know why these are very popular and the ones that sold out first. So, I ordered quite a few more for y'all. Because I know, we know that you love that vintage stuff. So we try to keep all the vintages in stock for you. This is the <clears throat> Christmas Noel layers. And so it's like the botanicals, but this one has more cards and stuff in it instead of plants. So we got stars, and we got the famous <laughs> Tim Holtz pointing finger, more stars, uh, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, look at that vintage Santa sleigh card, little vintage scene. December 25th, December 24th, holiday greetings. More pointing fingers. <laughs> uh, Christmas spirit, kind of like a uh, ticket to a Broadway show. Another vintage scene, postcard. All kinds of um, vintage ephemera that is Christmas themed. So buy your Christmas tree. And so this one has some larger ephemera in it. Look at the I collect Santa Clauses. Look at that. How pretty. I think I need to pe make a piece of uh, decor of some kind with him on it. And then you've got numbers in here for December 25th. A uh, little frame. How cute is that? So that's the um, Christmas Noel layers. Um, it says Vintage Santa on it on the website. And then this is the pocket cards. Now this one is the one that intrigued me the most when I was placing our order. And then when I ordered this, of course it suggested other things. <laughs> and that's when all the other stuff. Uh, so I ordered this first before I ordered anything else. Look at all the cards you get. And y'all know me with 
vintagey style cards like this. I love it. So it comes in a little hard pack. <coughs> There we go. And then it's all taped together. So you have little bitty cards. A whole big stack of them. And then you have... Oh, these are... Three inches. So two by three. These are probably three by four. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, I cannot get my throat cleared this morning for whatever reason. And these are six three by six okay Some beautiful cards to add to the fronts of your reading cards or onto your Christmas journal pages or on your scrapbook pages a lot of them have room on the back for writing oh look at the back of that one how pretty lovely so that yes they are double-sided Too pretty. Oh, look at that one. So pretty. And then the backs. So, anyway, that's some of the new stuff in the shop. And we have um, Home for the Holidays. is a nice uh, vintage-y looking um, collection. Christmas, kind of Christmassy, but just holiday themed in general, too. And I'm wanting to say that is Stamperia brand. I'm not sure. But anyway, we have quite a few Christmas um, themed collections. 12 by 12, 6 by 6, and some 8 by 8, I do believe. And we're ordering more as they come available. But we have um, realized this year that either it is on back order from somewhere and not set to be shipped out till the end of November or um, there is no product <laughs> they advertise it but there is no product because they can't get production going um, or that there are so many different ones we're trying to narrow it down to what um, we know that y'all would love and a lot of the stuff is kind of kitty um, kid-like, child-like kind of stuff, and um, I know that most all of our customers, anyway, are into the vintage or, um, you know, kind of easy-going, neutral kind of stuff, and when we get that really childish kind of designs in the shop, it takes forever for that to sell, so we don't want to get a lot of that Christmassy child stuff. On to this. Um, I tea stained uh, lots and lots and lots of papers. I mean, look at that. That's just a lovely little scene for me. I love, I love that look. But anyway, I needed some more um, tea stained paper. And what I do when I tea stain, I have this question every time I show uh, my stained papers, is I get four tea bags. Uh, the family size, four family size tea bags to a gallon of water. I microwave that for um, 14 minutes on high. And then I take that out. I have a Tupperware, a handled Tupperware gallon jug. I take that out and I let it steep for two days. Yeah. So um, don't cover it or anything. If you um, cover it, you're gonna it's going to collect mold. So, don't do that. But yes, I let it steep for two days. Because I like my pages darker and grungier looking. So, um, if you're okay with just a light tint, just let it steep for about two hours and then go to town. But I have those um, disposable 9 by 13 pans. And I pour that tea mixture after it's steeped forever how long I want it to into the pan and I just start dipping. I dip four pages at a time with um, gloves on. Four pages at a time, pull them out and this time usually what I do 
is I lay them out on my dining room table. Well, I got a new dining room table and that won't happen anymore. <laughs> Uh, because this dining room table is beautiful and it was handmade for me so um, <laughs> I won't be putting any stained papers on my dining room table anymore but I do have two four foot uh, collapsible tables that I can uh, lay papers out on in the future if I need to uh, <laughs> but this time what I did was I got out a baking sheet and put on uh, parchment paper to cover the baking sheet and I would dip one, two, three, four, kind of smush them down in the tea for, you know, maybe <clears throat> 30 seconds. Then I would use my gloves, pull those four pages out, let them drip just a couple of seconds. And then I laid them over onto my baking sheet and just layered them on top of each other. Every one of these got layered on top of each other on that baking sheet. I set my oven to 175 degrees and after I got done um, dipping every one of these then I poured out any excess tea that was in the bottom of that baking sheet back into my disposable pan and set them in the oven and just forgot about them for a while because at that low heat and they were so saturated and so wet I didn't have any issue with my papers burning or anything and that was the very first time that I can remember that I've ever baked paper and I love the results so we'll go through these I you know we're not gonna go through every one of them you've seen stained paper before but I just love how these turn out like the very top ones of course would get dry first and I would uh, look in there a couple you know every hour get off any dry ones off the top put them outside the oven and then maybe i rotated the paper a couple of times but that was about it and that as far as convenience is the easiest way instead of laying them all out all over your house and letting them air dry or a box fan on them um your family has to be careful not to you know <laughs> set a cup down or you know whatever when you're doing it that way so this was a little bit uh, more convenient anyway in the bottom of my pan I had a little bit of residual uh, ink from another um, dyeing session that I had and so I got a little bit of speckling from that look at this this is the one this is one of the ones that was in the very bottom of the pan so it got lots of stuff. It looks like a giraffe. <laughs> I love it. And then there are some that didn't get saturated too much on the opposite side. Maybe one side got really, really saturated and the other side didn't. But these turned out so pretty. I love them. I love the effect that I got. I mean, it's just, see, that's a lighter piece that didn't get saturated fully on one side but the other side did I just love this look so this is what I'm going to do so y'all can get a look at all of them look how dark that one got just flipping them back and forth and some of this was regular copy paper some of it was that premium copy paper that just kind of got mingled in with it and I had, this is another thing with baking paper, <clears throat> I had minimum tearing on these. Uh, when I lay them out, I'm constantly moving them around and shifting them and ones are dry on top so I've got to shift the ones on the bottom and um, I get tears a lot more when I lay them out on the tables to air dry. So I like this a lot better than um, air drying. So cute. Now they are a little more crinkly than when I air dry, but it's still not, they're not brittle. I mean, I can fold them and I get no tears or rips or anything like that. So yeah, I give baking 
baking inked paper or tea stained paper an A. Whereas laying them out to air dry, I would give a B minus. <laughs> so this is now my preferred way of getting it done. Now look at these two. They got a lot of speckles from that residual ink that was in the bottom of the pan. Ooh, that one did too. But I'm okay with that. Kind of got a little pinky orange to it every once in a while. I love the little bubbles, like where you had uh, tea and then there was an air pocket here. That is very cool. Look at that one. It has got some nice cells on it. Both sides. And then the other side is even darker. So pretty. But yeah, I got quite a few papers. I needed them. I was out of just brown, you know, vintage age look papers. So I'm glad that I did this. And uh, Brandon come home. <laughs> papers in the oven he was like I'm gonna guess that that's not supper <laughs> oh man I said unless you just really 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 need some tree fiber no that's not supper <laughs> uh, but I love the little dots that come out on this uh, the next day even <laughs> he asked me uh, I said, do you want to know what's in the oven? He went, is it paper? <laughs> I said, no, smarty pants. It's not paper. It's actual supper. I was going to tell you what we were going to have for supper, but never mind. I'm not going to tell you anymore. <laughs> oh, gracious. It was fun, though. I mean, even Aaron was like, uh, Mama, there's paper in the oven. It's going to burn. <laughs> No, buddy, it's not. It's okay. It's good. Anyway, that is my thoughts on baking paper, tea dyed paper. And you could do the same thing with coffee. I just did tea. I like the smell better, which I am a coffee lover. But I love the smell. I like the smell of tea staining a whole lot more than coffee stained paper. Um, I like the look that I get more when I tea stain paper also. So that's just my thoughts and my feelings and um, my review on that kind of stuff. So now, um, like I said, I had announced the winners of these two items twice and never got a response from either person. Um, so let's just redraw. This is a little ephemera holder that I made in a video that's got fabric on the outside of it and it has the very last pieces of the uh, bird waltz paper uh, cutouts the little cards and cutouts and things uh, from Blue Fern so they have retired this um, collection and it's got the last of that in it that I have and then from the video where I did the review on the Sharpie, new Sharpie S-Gel pens and showed you some Coco Daisy stuff and some uh, clips from Missy at Very Sweet Plans, I was trying my best to give away the stamp set, a pen, a couple of Missy's um, clips, and then um, some of the... Uh, cards that I didn't use in that video and then some of my stamped mushrooms that you just need to fussy cut out and then I'm even sending one of the cards that we made in that video so that's what one person will get and then the other person will get the ephemera holder with the already discontinued but much loved bird waltz cutouts so what I want you to do we're not going to go back to that to those other two videos they're older and 
um, everybody would have to look it up and then go back and make a comment on those and let's just go ahead and redo so if you want to be entered into this giveaway all I want you to do is leave a comment below with um, how you dye your papers do you bake it do you air dry it do you put it out on a clothesline <laughs> Uh, you, you might laugh with me, but um, Brandon and my daddy did that for a long time for kids with scrapbooking with me. They put out a, a clothesline in between, I think it was the basketball goal at one of the uh, Bradford pear trees at mom and dad's house. And um, actually put him up on the clothesline with clothespins and sprayed them. Put the ink or the whatever we were <laughs> going to be dyeing the papers with. They put it in a uh, spray bottle. One of those pump <laughs> spray bottles. My daddy was, I mean, he he was an entre entrepreneur, y'all. I mean, he come up with the ideas for stuff like that. So, um, don't laugh. I, I'm, I'm with you if you are a clothesline hanger-upper. So, uh, and if you've never dyed paper, don't worry about that. Still leave a comment uh, about what you like about this paper. If you have any questions about this paper, if your comment includes the word paper of any kind, you will be entered into this drawing. And I will announce this Monday. I will announce the winners Monday. So, really, really quick turnaround. We're not going to draw it out. Really quick turnaround to announce the winners on that. So here is that crackle paste, and it's still not all the way dry, but I mean, you can really see the crackling in there. Now, you can either put ink to it when it's fully dry, uh, you can leave it as is, you can just ink around the edges of it. If it was all the way dry, I would really heavily ink it but it's not and I don't want to mess up my mini blender but I will leave a uh, still shot at the end so you can really see that crackling that's in there on that because you can't see it real good since it's such a tiny spot but I will um, leave you a still shot at the end so you can see that crackle paste and it just leaves the nicest little aged effect to your projects and um, I like the air dry the way the crackle did for the air dry more than I do the little heat that I did heat set I did at the bottom there so anyway I'll leave you a uh, still shot of that y'all have a great day thanks for sticking around and seeing all the goodies and uh, participating in the giveaway y'all have a great day God bless love ya you are my people bye y'all